Okay, so what it is, I've come out today uh, whilst there's a ton of sun out and yeah, and it's not really great light conditions because it's very bright. Uh, and I've just been testing a couple of these really smaller cameras, but now I'm on to me AX53. So what it is, I'm in, uh, I'm in 4K mode with the active stabilization on. So this is the optical with a bit of um, electronic on it as well. Now it's not quite the same as in 1080, because in, in 1080 mode, it actually cuts in more onto the, uh, onto the sensor and gives you a lot more latitude with the electronic side of it. But I'm just hoping that in 4K mode like this, you know, it is okay. I mean, what I will do, I'll cut to 1080 shortly. But right now, what I'm more testing for is to see what it does with these lighting conditions pointing into the light with me in the frame. Now what it is, it's picked me up on face detection, but it doesn't, when it does that in fully auto mode with face detection, it doesn't expose, it just tries to attempt a focus for that. So as I'm turning around there, right, right now that, that might look okay now, or say somewhere like there, I might be okay. But still, there's a ton of white everywhere here as well, and the you know, and the clouds and all that. So there's a fair chance that it's going to be doing an average across the whole scene here as well. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure whether I'll be exposed properly. But what I'm going to do is just walk a little bit and talk. Um, these are the internal mics, and I've set it to a manual level. So you know, hopefully this is a, a you know, it's a good enough level going in, and I'm not distorting it. So this is going to be a better idea of what uh, the internal mics are capable of. But what I'm going to do in a second, I'm going to kind of come out of this mode. And uh, what it is, the, the video will be in 1080, but this is just going to be the 4K version of this particular stabilization to see what I can get away with or not with it. Then what I'm going to do is switch it shortly to one of the 1080 modes that's got the better stabilizer on. Then I'll put an external mic on, and then I'll do the fully touch screen for everything, which I've tested it very briefly this morning, and it looked very promising. So I'll flip over now to something else, and then I'll explain exactly the setup when I get to it. Okay, so I've now switched over onto 1080p, and I'm in intelligent active which is the best stabilization you can do on this. Also, I am now flipped over onto my ME64, which is under slung as well. Now, what I've done here for the exposure and such right now is I've done the touch to screen thing, which should um, be setting exposure for my face and also uh, the focus as well. So what should happen here as I turn round I should stay fairly much exposed, well, the exposure will remain the same on me, but other things may blow out behind me and stuff like this, so it's not going to stop down that sun or that sky, whereas if I touch it, the sky, it's going to shut everything down now, except for the sky there, let me go back on myself. Okay, I've just touched myself, oh, touched myself again. <laughs> Gotta to stop touching myself. Right, now the only thing is, I've just done that exposure to me, but I'm not entirely sure, but because there is that much sun behind it, I don't know how effective it would be at getting me. So let me just try it again from here. So I'm gonna tell it to, yeah, there we go. So that's gone better on me now. Yeah, okay. Now see that there, that actually looks good on the screen there. I mean, the snow might be blowing out and stuff, but it's probably got me quite good on this. So one, once again, this is 1080 and it's the intelligence active stabilization. So what I'm gonna do, let me just kind of get a bit of a distance there, okay. So I've just got a bit more distance on it and I've reset it. Uh, so let me just wait until that balances itself. Okay, well that reckons it's on me now. So let me just see what this stabilization's like. The only thing is, because it's, this is rough ground and it's grass and everything, and plus it's got snow down, so I don't really know what's underneath and what I'm, what I'm walking on. So this is quite tricky. Um, but, you know, it's probably gonna be a, a good little test for this setup now. So hopefully, being able to do this touch the screen thing, whether it's for me 
when I'm in front wanting to blabber away or if it's me pointing at people hopefully it's going to give me some kind of like you know good results and stuff let me just speed up a bit more as I'm walking here just really test it I mean again this kind of like I'm being very rough I was going to attempt to try and not be too rough but yeah no sorry I'm just going to go for it and see what it does and see how effective it can be I mean don't get me wrong you know I'm just pushing it stupid at the moment I wouldn't normally want to go as mad as this this um but anyway yeah let me just kind of stand off a little bit again okay now what i'm going to do is just cut again to a different thing right what i'm going to do now i'm going to turn the camera away from me and then i'm going to start explaining what i'm pointing at and i'm going to do that touch the screen to expose and focus okay now i'm going to be a bit quieter because i'm behind the mic that that's going to be quite blown out or it should be because it was previously exposing to me so what i'm going to do that right in the distance there where the trees meet at the top i'm going to touch the screen for that okay so i've just touched for the very end where the trees are so hopefully it's kind of pulled that into focus better but it's definitely it definitely has it re-exposed and stuff and the sky actually does look quite nice there as well I mean I'm only looking at this on a small screen and everything on a small screen probably looks all right as well now if I turn this way I mean that exposure is probably not going to work for this so what I'm going to do now this kind of big tree right in front of us I'm going to click on that so there we go so I've just I've just clicked for that tree now there's a fair chance that the snow might be blown out there but the thing is for this type of shooting you are trying to trying to focus and get your exposure for a specific thing so you know there's no unless you're shooting hdr and even then it's got its limitations but you have you know you, you you are having to be careful about trying to get what it is you're trying to concentrate on and you do have to understand that other things will suffer for that within the frame so as a for instance i'm looking up now at the sky now there's a gap there between the trees just here or just above i'm going to click on that for that for that cloud up there so as you can see that's closed right down again and hopefully the bulk of them clouds are coming out are coming out looking really well now presumably if i kind of pan about a little bit now like this the clouds will all probably look okay fair enough i mean the the focus might might go out slightly um, but as far as exposure for the sky and the clouds is concerned that should all be good and even if i turn right around to where the sun is here i'll probably end up getting something decent out of that again not entirely sure about focus now what i'm going to do is point it at the floor and then you know reset again so i'm going to touch it now okay that's now settled and said that it's right so i'll just kind of move about a bit on the floor here and let's see what that's like for detail and such that you know well basically for focus and exposure okay and then what i'll do i'll bring it up and then obviously the exposure is not going to be correct for other things although saying that i don't know is that is that really that bad i'm not entirely sure okay now what i'm going to do i'm going to click on the snow here the white snow there or the brighter snow so that's going to click yeah that's closed it down a bit now there's a bit more definition there on all the snow because the exposure seems to be a bit better for it but it won't have helped the rest of the shot i doubt so what i'll do again i'll just kind of click on some of this tree line over here see what that does so that's again that's going to blow out the snow and stuff now the thing is when i do it the other way around when i when i let it average itself out that's going to be good for certain things but it may not always catch what you know what it is that you're intending it to get so this way of doing it if i thought oh, let me just finish this bit off by turning it back around yeah what i was getting at then was that when you do the click you know the touch to like everything for focus and exposure like i've just done again here for me because if i turn slightly there we're definitely going to get that that sun blasting through which could you know that that might give a good effect for certain things but at the very least it means that we can point towards the sun i block it a bit and then we just kind of like touch you know touch for the subject here and then kind of kind of get exposure and focus for here and still have like an interesting bit of a like blown background as well then obviously if i turn around this way 
it's got probably going to look a bit better. I mean, I'm not entirely sure how, how well it's handling white balance and stuff when I come out of like shadow or something like that. Like say there, for instance, that might be okay. Anyway, point I'm getting at. Um, rather than going out and trying to manually do stuff, especially handheld and all that nonsense, with this camera, I've got two options, completely fully auto. Just have a quick look at the screen to make sure that the position's okay for its average auto that it would normally do. Then I've got the options to do the, the point and click at the part of the screen that I want to focus and expose to. So between them two things, I think that's the best thing that I've got about this camera, which is just going to make it much easier to do certain things. And I've already had a quick test of this against some of my other smaller cameras. This definitely does have a bit of a... I'd say it has a lot of an advantage over some of the other stuff. Maybe not the E1, because the E1's got a, a micro four thirds sensor. Um, but the only problem with the E1, I don't have brilliant glass for that. I've only got like F8 glass for it at the moment. Um, but, you know, the thing is with this, I do have the option of um, being able to like m get it done better because of the glass on that's on this because this is a Zeiss lens that's on it so this compared to what's on the E1 this is better glass and um, but also although the sensor on this is smaller than the E1 it's bigger than the GoPro and the E and all that stuff so yeah this has got more advantages for picture over the action cams but maybe the sensor wise not quite the same as the E1 but this has other other functions and features such as the stabilization and, and all this all this touch to do stuff you can't do that on the e1 so i think you know amongst all the cameras that have got outside of me ax100 this is great I, I, i'm really getting into it now anyway okay so i think i've yammered on with this test for quite some time so yeah i think i'll give this one a miss now anyway because i did a bit of a walk i pointed this stuff and i've been touching myself as well <laughs> thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now